Hey there, fellow travelers, and welcome to Travel News. Today is September 7th, 2022, and today we've got a lot of stuff we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about some fun stuff, some happy stuff, but also we're talk about some not-so-much fun stuff. So we're going to talk about the transportation Department of Transportation's new website so you can know what your airline says they're going to do before you go up and talk to them so you know if you have a chance or not. That's our big thing to talk about. It's great news to see where it's all together. Now, some other things we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about, um, well, we're going to talk about some of the COVID protocols that are changing. That's going to affect your travel. Some stuff to think about when you're traveling this fall. Also, we're going to be talking about uh, issues about good and bad travelers out there. So, all kinds of things. And we have our weekly tourist dum dum of the week award, which will go to two pilots this week. So, let's get started, everybody. So, the first thing I want to talk about is I want to show you. The best thing for, well, not the best thing to happen to travel. If we didn't have all the delays, that would be the best thing to happen. But we actually have a brand new website. The U.S. Department of Transportation has finally come out with their airline customer service dashboard. If you go to transportation.gov slash air consumer, well, just go to transportation.gov and you'll see the link to the website. It was fantastic on this website. It lists the commitments for controllable cancellations and commitments for controllable can delays. So you have both those, and it'll actually go by airline. What does a Legion do? What does American do? Delta do? So if you have a question, hey, will they rebook me on my same airline for no cost? Everybody rebooks you on the same airline. What about rebooking the passenger on airline on another airline at no cost? Well, it. Alaska won't do that. Allegiant won't do that for you. Frontier, Southwest, Spirit. Nope. They're only going to hook you up on flights that are with their carrier. So if there's a cancellation and you see another flight going to Chicago and you're flying Alaska or Allegiant, they are not going to put you on that other flight. Like they've stated that right here. So now if you're going up, you can beg all you want. They're like, we don't do that, man. You should fly with American or Delta or Hawaiian or JetBlue or United because if your flight's canceled, then they will help you switch to another airline at no additional cost. So one of the benefits of flying some of those, you know, a little bit higher price airlines that can help out. Some other things that are important to know is the meal or meal voucher. It's this one right here. The meal or meal cash voucher when cancellation results in passengers waiting for three hours or more. That's key because sometimes you're waiting a long time and then it gets canceled. Well, hey, we're going to hook you up. And you see that pretty much everybody's giving you some food except for Allegiant. Okay. If we're looking for complimentary hotels, if you have an overnight stay, only Frontier is saying, too bad, pal. So you have that. Now, what about delays? Because this one, we're starting to see um, other things out there. I know rebook passengers on the same airline at no additional cost at different times for the day. Everybody is letting you do that. That's one of the good things I think that's come about from this is everyone's like, look, there's a delay. If you want to switch to another plane, no problem. You'll get, like, I know for when I've had delays with airlines, they like send me a message like, hey, would you like to switch? You've had a delay. Like, I'm okay because the next flight's after that one. So something to think about. But what's interesting is when you start looking at things like here, meal or meal cash voucher when flight delay results. And that's three hours. Now, a lot of places would be four hours or more. Now, they've come down to three hours or more de delay. They're going to get you some food, except for Allegiant. They will not. Okay? So you start to see is there's all these things down here. So you have an idea what's up there because sometimes you don't know. And I know for myself, when I've flown sometimes – um, like, I don't know what I don't know. And so this puts it all out there, you know, so you have an idea of what you can get because I've been on a flight before where my flight got, you know, there was literally the, the, the plane broke. Like they literally had to get a tow truck to tow the plane off of the boarding can. Okay. And we're like, oh man. So we knew we were going to have to spend, spend the night. There was no way our flight was going to go. We weren't going to make our connection. So we actually called, got our connection switched the next day, you know, and, and we went into town and literally, like, I'm calling from the Uber, like, getting in the Uber after we've, you know, got in outside the airport in Indianapolis, and we're calling them up, like, oh, yeah, you would have got a voucher if you would have got the voucher before you left the airport. You left the airport, so we're not going to do anything now. I'm like, that's not cool. But it's one of those things. Now you can see, it's like, okay, we got this delay. What do we get? You can check here on this. So this is actually something that's really helpful that I know sometimes it's not cool that these things happen. But at least now we have a nice little kind of setup over here. So you can see what you can expect. So if you're going to be flying next summer and you're seeing like, look, like I'm looking Frontier is the one who doesn't, isn't given a lot of help. Like that's going to influence my picking of airlines. So like 
if I'm looking, you know, overall, I'm probably going to be American, Delta, JetBlue, United. They're the ones that are doing all the stuff to help me out, whereas other ones have certain things they're not going to do. And that, you know what? As much as we hope that things will be back to normal next year, I don't know if things will be back to normal next year, next summer. Like, I'm expecting some hiccups. So it's kind of good to know when you start thinking about planning your trips for next year. Okay, so this is really big news. The U.S. Department of Transfer Day has that there. Now, all this information was already out there. You know, if there's the, the Erica on TikTok and Instagram. So, oh, I'm a lawyer. I read the fine print. You don't have to read the fine print. It's all right here for you. So that can give you an idea of what you can do. Now, if the people, the gate agents will actually help with this, I can't say but at least they put it out there for the Department of Transportation and you can show this to them being like, look, your company has said you were going to do that. So that is really cool news. I think that we have out there um, some of the, the, the Department of Transportation has done. I think it's a good thing to help travelers like you and me out. So we, if we do have cancellation, we do have delays. If we know our airline, we know what we can expect from them. And then we need to make sure you're asking for that. So if they do say you're going to give, they're going to give you money or they're going to give you the voucher or whatever, you get your voucher. Okay. Spend that money. And, and the voucher for food sometimes is basically a Visa gift card kind of thing. Or sometimes it's only a Visa gift card that only works in the airport. So, so just be ready for that. Now, on to some other news having to do with dealing with your other passengers when you fly. Well, recently... One of our fellow travelers, Stuart on here, mentioned that his sister had a 24-hour hiccup layover in Crete, on Crete, which usually is a great thing. However, it's because of drunken, really, passengers and the pilots and the crew. Oh, they don't, like, they flew too much, they couldn't fly. These are things you have to realize is those things sadly do happen because the pilots and the, the flight attendants and everybody, they have a strict limit of how much they can fly. They're not allowed to go. Like it, there, you, you'll you hear stories about flights that were literally, they're halfway across the Atlantic and they have to land early because, oh, we timed out. This is one thing. There's nothing you can do about that. You don't know what's going on there. That's why those delays can be tough. If there's too much of a delay, they can't all fly. So that can be a very big, serious issue. But again, Sadly, there's nothing you can do about it. Now, with the drunk passengers, this is one thing you need to realize is when you go on airlines, certain airlines that are known for holiday adventures, you know, and, and I'm not saying it's just on there. You have drunk idiots in all kinds of planes. Look at news about United, American, Delta, Southwest. They're, they're all over. But you have to know that if you're going to a party destination, you're going for it on an airline that's more of a party airline or a vacation destination airline, you tend to have people that are there that are like, look, I'm going to enjoy every single moment of my flight and they're going to drink the entire time. And so when they get on the plane, they're a little out of control. Now, sometimes flight crews can, can deal with them and handle them. And sometimes they can't, if you have a delay, that's one of those things that usually if you're a person that causes those delays, you'll probably be banned from that airline. And that's something that you don't want to happen. So I'm going to guess if you're watching this, you're not one of the people that does that, but just have a no for that, okay? Now, another issue that I've seen being popping up lately is people being upset because they're asked to move for seats to, to accommodate families. There's, there's an article in The Independent today about, your travel issues are not my problem. Passenger praise for refusing to give up seat for family on flight. Well, here's the thing. I know for me, I mean, I want, I want to be with my kids and I, I want to fly with them. And I want them to sit by me. But I also know that I, I have to pay if I want to get a seat with them. And where you're seeing people where the where these issues are coming up is people are paying for specific seats. Like I'm a fat guy. You might not notice this, but I'm a little husky. Okay. I'm not super tall. I, I almost made it to six feet when I was 15, and then I never grew again. <laughs> but I always know for me, I need that aisle seat because I need that little bit extra room. I need that little bit of space, and then I don't bother the person in the middle seat. So I make sure I pay to get my seat in a specific spot. And I know some people have the spots they really like, and so they pay for that. Whereas other tickets you buy that doesn't assign a seat, like if you do one of those, um, the, the really cheap flights, or like, no, sorry, not like the super economy fare, where you only get your seat the day you fly. So other people already pick their seats. And if you have a group, a family together, and they bought tickets that way, they don't have a seat reservation until they get to the airport. And when you get to the airport, there might not be any seats available. So your child might not sit with you. Now, there are rules in, depending on the age of the child when they have to sit with you. But other times, I think it's over six, they can sit by themselves. And, and, and that's just it, is if you want to guarantee that your, your child is going to be sitting with you, you need to pay for the seat. 
to get your seat next to you. Not, I mean, a lot of times people, I mean, I always, I'm glad to switch. I mean, I paid for my seat, but Hey, look, if you want your family together, that's way better than, than me having a little leg room to make sure the family's together. But there's something you really have to think about that. Now, Baggy T says, an unpopular opinion, Ben under fives on long haul flights, too much screaming. I'll be honest with you, my kids were under five and they were better than 99% of the kids, or not the kids, the people on planes. Okay, so we can look at banning people from planes, but the same just for little kids. Yeah, I think you need to look, I mean, parents need to do more. Uh, but also, like, yeah, don't be a jerk when you're on the plane, too, because you have the drunks, you have those. Do we ban them from flights as well? So all kinds of stuff. But anyway, that was one thing I think is an issue uh, that airlines are looking at because people complain about it. But now people are saying, no, I paid for this ticket. I paid for the seat. You could have paid for your seat. So something to think about with that. And another thing looking with kids and travel is Carnival is now going to have a curfew for kids under 18. Now, of course, that this is in travel and leisure, and, and, and the best thing is is they're, they're saying Carnival's going to have a curfew for kids, but there's some exceptions. Yeah, basically, if you sign your kid up for their kids' clubs and do it, pay for those things or put your kids in those things, then they can stay out later. But basically, you have, you have cruise lines that are saying, look, the adults want to have fun at night, and they don't want the kids wandering around. I completely understand that, but that's one thing. If you're going to be traveling with kids or you're going to be on a, a cruise and you want, don't want to deal with you know, kids running around, well, then maybe you choose a carnival cruise that has some of these exceptions. And there are other places that already have um, curfews, like Norwegian Cruise Lines has a 1 a.m. curfew for all teenage guests. Okay, so so there are things there. Yes, ban crappy parents, not kids. Yes, Randolph, I, I agree with you on that. There's that. Sometimes kids melt down. I understand that, but parents need to do something. And realize <clears throat> it's a safety issue. People that think the flight attendants will babysit their kids those are the worst ones because those kids go back and if there's a little turbulence and that that dinner cart flies, that kid is going to be in a world of hurt or worse, okay? So you need to make sure you're watching your kids when they're in the plane. But for cruisers, that's something you might want to think about because there are some cruise lines that tend to go for an older crowd. Maybe you go for that or you go on one of these that have the curfews that are out there. Now, <clears throat> looking at... <laughs> A new article on USA Today, they're talking about um, are we should be expecting the summer travel chaos to continue through the fall. And it seems like air travel is getting a little bit back to normal. There are still hiccups. There are still delays. American is saying that they might be canceling more flights later this year, not just the 31,000. They canceled for November, I believe it was. There might be more. So... The chaos won't be as much because there's more people that will be working, but also there's less people flying because summer is peak, summer se travel season, and they're talking about the fall. Now, when we look at Thanksgiving and we look at Christmas holidays, I would expect you're going to have those hiccups and those headaches again. So make sure if you're going to be traveling Thanksgiving this year or at Christmas time, carry on only, people. Try to get as few connections as you can. If you need to drive an extra hour or two to a different airport to get a direct flight, I would recommend doing that to save yourself the headache. Even if you got to pay for the parking, it's worth it to avoid the headache and not having luggage for six weeks. So something to think about. Now, it is now leaf peeping season in the U.S. And if you are looking for a place to know where you should be checking out those leaf peepings, if you go to Travel and Leisure, they actually have an article up this week talking about this fall foliage map shows when leaves will peak in your state in 2022. This is actually a super helpful map. If you're not sure where to go, um, that's up. And I'm not showing it up here because it's U.S. government stuff you can show because we're all paying taxes and stuff. But this is a, another website, and they literally have it by – it's by county. And you can see where you should go to see where the leaves are going. Where I live right now, it's all green, so there's no reason to go outside and do some leaf peeping. But if you're looking up in New Hampshire and Maine and northern New York, you're getting towards the end of the season. So it's time to, time to get your leaf peeping going and get all those things in. So hopefully I'll have a Don'ts of Vermont video coming out soon to help you out, okay? Now, another bit of travel news coming your way is uh, with all the droughts and all the heat we've been having lately, a lot later in the season than normal, you know, the Grand Canyon is actually warning visitors to prepare for excessive heat because a hiker died, you know, uh, a few days ago uh, because of the excessive heat. So you do need to be careful. And, and I think that's one thing. When people look at going hiking when they travel, they don't think of the, not danger, but the risks that are involved. Um, I know with our Swiss travel videos, one of the things Swiss travelers really wanted us to talk about was that 
people go hiking in the Swiss Alps and don't realize that it's not an easy like running through like the sound of music stuff. Oh, no, 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 no. It's a lot more than that. Okay, so make sure if you're going to be going on these hikes, check the weather forecast because it's not just heat. It could be cold. It could be, you know, exposure can get you. Okay, either direction. But make sure you're having your water, you're having the right shoes, you're having the thing prepared, and let people know where you're going to go hiking, your hotel, your Airbnb, your friends. Let them know so you're checking in when you're going and you check in when you come back because that's when people know, hey, I haven't heard from the Walters family. Are they okay? So something to think about. Now, um, now, a CNN Traveler had a thing on airlines tweaked their plans to offer meals, hotels, and flights are canceled. That's going directly into the Department of Transportation's talk, what we talked about earlier today. Um, but there are some things I got to talk about when we're looking at COVID stuff. Now, I know I said the word, so now no one will ever watch this video, and we're not talking about any of those things there, but we're looking at COVID restrictions. And some places are really lowering their COVID restrictions. Japan raise this daily cap on arrivals. So they're letting more people come in. They've now dropped some of their uh, COVID-19 restrictions like testing before you fly if you're fully vaccinated. St. Lucia, I mean, they eliminating all pre-testing protocols so you can just go, except you still have to have a vaccine. So you have to you know, upload your vaccine card. Fiji no longer in, is no longer going to require tourists coming to Fiji to test when they get there. Yeah, you still have to do it before you go and the vaccination stuff, but you set to test upon arrival and see if you were testing positive. They are no longer going to be doing that. Um, the reason why I bring this up is because China has locked, I mean, China's gone down to lockdowns quite, quite strongly uh, when there's been flare-ups in COVID. And that's one of those things that really discourages people from traveling to China at the moment and, and discourages people within China from traveling because they don't want to get stuck somewhere. And I think that's important is when you start looking at your travel plans for next year or later this year, what, what, have, what have countries or cities done before? And is that something I'll do? Like that I could live with if something happens. Like some places, you know, they just institute, no, you have to wear masks inside during the fall. I, I can deal with that. But if it's places like, no, if there's one thing, we, we lock the entire country down, no one goes outside, then you might want to consider if that's going to be the right place for you to go in case something happens. Or if that is something that does happen, you make sure you bring your laptop with you so then you can do your you know digital nomad lifestyle and you're hoping your boss is okay with you being remote for a week or two. So that's something to really kind of think about. Um, other things to look at, I would say the droughts in Europe continue on. And I've talked about this the last few weeks, but it's important to mention because I keep getting emails about this. People that have signed up for river cruises in Europe. Um, yes, the droughts are there. And that means like the Rhine and the Mosul and the, you know, the, the Danube. The, some parts are inevitable. You can't, you can't boat through there. They can't do the cruise. So you don't get that view. Now, your cruise company is not going to stop from giving that cruise, though. But what you'll probably end up doing is instead of having that lazy, you know, deck champagne while you watch the castles go by on the Rhine, you're on a bus or you're on a train going from destination to destination. And some of your excursions you want to do will no longer be available. So make sure if you're going to be going on a cruise this fall to Europe, Make sure you see like what are all the possible excursions because some might be eliminated due to the fact that they can't get there with a the boat. And so you're limited to train or bus connections. Okay. So I want to give you that. And our winners for the uh, Dum Dum Travelers of the Week Award goes to two Air France pilots who were suspended after getting into a fight in their cockpit. Now, this was early in the summer when this happened. And this all came out because they're doing reviews on Air France's pilots and stuff. And Kind of an interesting article to read if you check it out on CNN Traveler. But I think if two pilots are getting into a, a fisticuffs while they're flying, yeah, it's not just the, the, the travelers that are bad travelers sometimes. Sometimes the pilots are too. So just some news I wanted to bring up to you uh, while we're going. Um, I thought it's always nice to kind of go through some of the more interesting and important news when it comes to travel. Uh, so we have that. And, and today I want to talk about some scams. But... Um, I think I want to see if there's any questions here before I get going. Let's see. Doo -doo, recent ones. Lots of trips. Recommendations. All right. So what I want to talk about now in today's thing is travel scams and ripoffs. Because this is one thing. We actually had a couple of our, a couple of our fans wrote us, and they were in Rome 
coming in from the airport. They took the train in and they're taking the Metro to their hotel and they got their per their wallet stolen on the train. So their driver's license was stolen. Their credit cards are gone. The cash out were gone. Luckily the wife had her own driver's license so she could rent the car. Cause here's the thing. If your driver's license gets stolen, when you travel, um, rental car companies will not rent you a car because they need to have a physical license. Now there's things you can do. Your local, your state DMV might have an emergency license thing where they can get you something, but that might not be okay with your, with your, um, with your car rental place, you're out of the country. So that's one thing to really think about. Also, if you're going to go travel, make sure you're, um, share, like, cop, like take a picture of your license, all the important documentation. So you have that. Also, if you're going to be uh, traveling within your own country, uh, have a picture of your insurance policy or your insurance card. So what they ask, oh, do you want to buy insurance? They like, no, I have insurance that covers me in the U.S. You have proof for that there. Okay. Um, now, in terms of some scams, if you want to read the article we have on scams, I have the link down below if you want to read it later. But there's some really common scams that people are still falling for quite a bit when they travel. And one of the ones I've, I saw, and there's a lot of different ways you put it. It's it's the gelato scam when you're in Italy. It's the bird poop scam when you're in, you know, I don't know, like in Spain. It's the mustard stain on your shirt when you're in Germany. Basically, what it is is one person accidentally bumps into you or notices something on you. You're like, oh, you got something on you. Let me help. And they're, you know, they're dressed nice or whatever, and they'll, they'll wipe it off. But while you do that, you put your bag down for them to help you. And then you're like, hey, thanks. Hey, no problem. You have a great time. I'll see you later. And they wander off. And then you wander, you wonder, where did your bag go? They didn't take it. Their buddy is the one who grabbed it. So anytime anybody's over helpful, you do really want to take care with that. And the thing is, is sometimes people just feel, I feel sorry for someone when I'm traveling. It's a beggar out there. Oh, it's a mother and their child out there. Oh, I feel so sorry for them. And I do feel sorry for them. But the thing is, what you have to realize in some places where you travel, the beggars are not necessarily doing bad. Like some beggars do better than normal people with jobs, but also sometimes the beggars are actually part of an organized gang. Okay, so those kids aren't going to school because they're going to be begging. They should be in school. I got a fly in here now. But that's one thing is do be careful um, if you do see, you know, kids begging and parents and kids begging because there are some issues with that. Okay, so, you know, if you want to get, you can, but just know that that's not always the case. And also, if anyone ever like, offers, asks you to hold their child or a lot of kids come up to you at one time, make sure you hold your wallet because that's a very popular one. In some destinations where a lot of kids come up, hey, 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 and then next thing you know, your wallet's gone. And even if it's in your money belt, underneath your shirt, poof, it's gone. So something to think about for that. Other travel scams, um, like, I, I, and I'm not necessarily scams, but just places where you should really pay attention. Um, really, the subway, any public transportation, any public transportation, when it's the in, going in and going out, Okay, that's going to be a very popular spot because you're focused on this is my stop. I need to get off here. Do I turn left or right when I walk out the door? So you're focused on that, not on your wallet, your back pocket, or your front pocket, or your purse. And here's the thing sometimes people don't steal your purse, they just unzip it, zip it back up. I've seen people do that with backpacks on escalators with lots of people around. If you think just because lots of people are around, they're not going to get you, they can. So make sure. You're in public transportation. Keep your bag in front of you. Keep your stuff. You know, be mindful of all these things. You may think I'm paying attention, but they can still get you. Okay, so so be have a heads up for that. Also, if you're going to places that have like the tap in, tap out, or a slide kind of thing to to get in, and they open doors to go in the metro, you'll see people that'll try to go in with you. And sometimes they're just trying to go in with you cheap, but sometimes they're picking pockets while they go. That's actually happened in in Paris to my dad at Garden Nord. And the, the cops like jumped over and grabbed the girls. The girls grabbed, dropped on my dad's stuff. They're like, oh, look, we don't have anything. That just fell out of his back pocket. And the cops really didn't do anything to him. Like that's one of the things that gets really frustrating is that people don't, sometimes the cops when you travel around don't care as much about the pickpockets and stuff. And they kind of poo-poo them away. Or you can be like my parents where the, in Barcelona, they just laugh at you if you get pickpocketed. So do have a heads up for that. Yes, thank you, Jonathan. Yeah, oh, my, my computer's freezing up here. Yes, uh, yesterday was Jocelyn's anniversary, so thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, another thing I think is important, and I think um, I'm just going to put it kind of together in taxi scams, is 
knowing your route to your hotel, ask your hotel, your accommodation, the best way to get someplace. That's the best way to do it because if taxis know you don't know, they know they can do whatever they want. That's why I always follow on my phone. I'll follow on the, an app like, hey, where do we need to go? And then I'll you know follow along with it. So that's important to look at. Um, another thing is when you're putting your bags in the back, stay back while they put the bags in and be out there when they take the bags out. Make sure you get all your bags. Trust. I mean, people are good people all over the world, but just don't trust everyone all the time. Because you may think they're just being helpful, but sometimes people forget to put a bag out. Oops, honest mistake. Oops, you know, so there's that. Also, you know, it's never hurts to ask for a receipt because if you ask for a receipt from your taxi, then and your bag goes missing, you have that taxi's number. They have that. They're not going to they're not going to rob you because you have all their info. So something to think about. Um, another thing I think is important is especially these days, if you're looking at internet scams, and I'm not going to say like a fake like Airbnb listing or something like that. What I'm talking about is internet scams when you're going out in public and you're seeing, oh, there's free Wi-Fi. I want to log on. Yeah. Look, I don't have, I don't, I'm not sponsored by any VPN yet. Okay. But VPNs are kind of important to use. But even if it's not that, if you're at your hotel, make sure you have the one that you have to log in for, the one they tell you to use. Because I will see, I mean, I was at a Hilton, where was it? Hilton Garden in, it's in Vermont. No, where were we? It's like, it was on our last trip in the U.S., and there was like the the Hilton thing, but there was another one on there. I'm like, why are there two? So I went to the one that had the password protection that you had to use. I had that one, but the other one, I'm like, that's kind of sketchy because there are people at more popular tourist destinations that will sit outside hotels. They'll have their laptop there, put up a hotspot so somebody can use the internet for free. And then they're stealing the stuff that you're sending by, or they might have something to get into your computer. So you want to be careful with that. Okay. So, you know, don't, don't, don't just hop on Wi-Fi because you're like, oh, it's free. That's why I usually recommend make sure you have your, you know, you have your data package from back home. So you're using it. Okay. Cause you may think, oh, $10 a day for the package is too much. I'm like, well, not be able to access your cash because they liquidated your funds because you gave, use the wrong, you know, use the wrong Wi-Fi. That could be something else to think about. So just uh, just wanted to kind of cover some of those things. And there's there's a lot more. The the the, the scam the the blog has a bunch in there. We have a lot of videos on scams uh, as well to help you out on different destinations. And it's funny because sometimes people get mad at us. They're like, "You've already talked about this." I'm like, "Yeah, I talked about this in another scam video." But people don't look up general scams of traveling. They look up scams of Paris, scams of Rome, not scams of Italy. You know, so we have to do those for individual ones. The same thing with some of the food things. Like we'll have a, like right now we're working on some uh, Italian food videos and I've made, you know, some general, like general Italian food that you should have. But then I have the Eats of Bari, the Eats of Puglia, the Eats of, you know, Rome, the Eats of Sorrento on the Amalfi Coast, the Eats of Vicenza, because there are some times that things are very different when you're going through each of these. So lots of, lots of stuff to kind of think about. So just check out waltersworld.com. We've got all kinds of things out there to help you. Now, going to some of our questions. Question time. So Bobby asks, is Madrid as bad with pickboxes Barcelona? No, it is not. Um, you do not have I, – I, it doesn't feel like you have as many tourists in Madrid as you do in Barcelona. Um, also, Barcelona in the tourist areas, there's a more uh, – you do feel more of a police presence uh, when you're going around there. Um, it's usually a different – I mean, you have much more of a party atmosphere in Barcelona and a more serious atmosphere in Madrid – and kind of the tourists kind of reflect the same way. So just something to kind of think about when you're looking at that. So that would be one thing I would look at. Baggy T, is it common for a hotel to take a small refundable deposit and not refund it when the room is canceled and the free cancellation booking? No, that shouldn't be common. Um, if they if you did that with a booking.com or Airbnb or whatever, whatever service you use to book it with, you need to uh, report that. Also, you need to report your credit card and, and tell them, hey, Visa, they sold this as a refundable reservation and they have not refunded the money um, because they can get in trouble with Visa if enough people complain. But you do need to file a complaint if something like that happens. Because the, a lot of times they're like, oh, my bad, and then they'll send you the money. It's a lot of times that it, they can play it off as an honest mistake. If it's only like 20, 30 euros, 20, 30 dollars, sometimes people don't even notice it. So something to think about. It's kind of like when people get your credit card number, they don't buy thousands of dollars of stuff at first. They do a few things like, oh, $50 gift card to Walmart or a $50 gift card to Target, places where you wouldn't notice. Like, oh, I go to Target. Maybe my wife got a card or something. So something to really kind of think about uh, when you're there. Okay. 
Let's see. Drew Klein, how strict are they in Italy regarding wearing the proper mask on public transport? I believe I read it was be a specific kind. Yeah, the, the KN95s are what they're called in the U.S. So you have to wear those. Um, however, Italy had changed the rules. So you, at least when we were there, they, they went down. They might have gone back up. But if you were there in May, like if you didn't have a KN95 or, or what they, they call it something different, different in Europe. If you didn't have one of those fancier ones, like they're like, no, you're out, you're out, you're out. Go, but the thing is, every kiosk was selling them for like a dollar or two dollars, so you could get one relatively easily. Though they broke like hell because we had to use those on our first part of our trip when we we're in June. We we're in June in Italy for the month, but then when we got to July, then they changed the rules a little bit, so that was only on certain transportation. But there is that. Um, when they are being strict, they are very strict. Uh, so don't have, don't. I would, if I were you, just have the get a, like a, a five pack of those can ninety fives. And, and take that with you just in case because some places are not even doing it anymore um because the cloth masks are like nah bro that doesn't work but we're not we're not going for that one so oh claire that's awesome glad you had a good time in italy and congratulations on the nuptials <laughs> so here's the fun my favorite hotel in london uh <laughs> actually i would call it uh, casa de dave uh, my friend Dave, who has lived in London since 2002, yeah, 2002, I've stayed with him every time for the last 20 years. Um, there was, you know, and I stayed with another friend a couple times too. But literally, I have not stayed in hotels there because my, I have friends that live there. So I don't have a favorite one. Ah, uh, yes, a, a little scam. The, plus the tourist trip restaurant and bars where they to where they get double charged this then the local especially on the alcohol if it says one beer likely export beer then local beer yeah that's actually happened to me a lot of times in south america where you're like oh give me a beer and they get you the heineken which is like five bucks versus the keel mace which is a dollar so there's those things so make sure you always look at the menu like if you're in prague on the square you know you're gonna pay up when you buy a beer on the square but then you're like no i want to check beer and i'll give you something else and they'll overcharge you so do have a heads up on that Yeah, drums still require the mask, but yeah, no enforcement of public transportation. Yeah, that, that's just that they're not enforcing like they used to be. Which country has the best public transportation? Huh. Well, I would say best public transportation for a small country, you'd probably go with Luxembourg because all public transportation is free. So if it's free, you don't really mind no matter where you go. Um, I think for people that want to use train travel to get places, Germany is really good because the trains seem to go everywhere when you're there. Um, trains go a lot of places in Italy, but not all over the place, and they're delayed unless it's the freshest. I wouldn't go there, but probably Germany, uh, just because of the amount of stops and the places you're going to go, and then the bus systems there are very well put together, very well organized. Um, I think one that's kind of surprising for some people is actually Finland has a really good train system it's just limited to where it goes, but the bus systems are very good. But what I love about public transportation in Finland is though Finland is very expensive, the public transportation of the bus is actually quite cheap, quite affordable. We actually put out a video a couple of weeks ago on train travel in Finland because of that. Um, though I know no one's going to watch it because not that many people go to Finland, but this is the time of year where no one's watching travel videos. So I'm putting out more targeted things lately. Like today was, you know, um, how to speak Italian, and I know we're not a language video channel, so it's not going to do much, but I like to have some of those videos to help people when they're there. Let's see. Oops, sorry. Any reason to be concerned with a lot of strikes at Transport in the Netherlands? Not really. Um, it happens every so often. We were there when the garbage men were on strike one year, but um, it's not like Greece or, or Portugal or Italy where you have to worry about a little bit more, so there's that. What's up, Thomas Reiser? Good to see you. Yeah, Prague does have cheap public transportation, so there's that. Christopher, hey, my dad is going to Basel for work and is letting me go with him. That's cool. Any tips for that area or possible day trips going to be my first time in Europe? Yes. Um, I won't have it out probably before you go, but I have a day trips from Strasbourg video, and those are all day trips for you. So you have a direct train from Basel to Colmar, France. So I have a Don'ts of Colmar video. It's 45 minutes. It goes like every other hour. So you can go and take that. Don't take the one that switches. There's one that goes direct. 
you can do that one. That's a great day trip for you. I'd go with that one first. That's a close one. For Germany, uh, there's ICEs and faster transit go to Freiburg, Germany. We have a Dunza Freiburg that's coming out uh, not this Saturday, but the next Saturday. No, yeah, next Saturday, the 17th or something. We have a Dunza Freiburg video coming out. Um, Strasbourg's a little bit farther, but you can do Strasbourg. So I have Dunce and Shocks videos for all those places to help you out. We also have a Dunce of Basel video to help you. And I think I talked about some of those day trips. Those would be, if you want to get out of Basel and go into other countries, those would be ones I'd recommend. If you're going to be in Switzerland, then I, you know, you can go down to Lucerne, which is a beautiful town, or Interlaken to do some uh, outdoor, like, adventure tourism stuff. So that would be some stuff for you that I recommend. Let's see. Yes, UK trains. UK train fares are expensive. I know. I know I'm going, I'm going back and I'm like, oh man, I forgot how bad they are. Ugh. So it can be a bit tough. Best and worst airlines you have flown with. I don't know. Like, I mean, I fly with Delta all the time because I like them. Um, like I haven't flown the Singapore airlines or Qatar airlines or Emirates. I've never flown any of those. So I can't judge on the super high end elegant ones. I'm just not, I've enjoyed flying with Delta. I enjoy flying with British Airways. Uh, they've always been fine. Uh, ones I have not really enjoyed. I did not enjoy flying uh, Allegiant. I thought their plane was really dirty. Um, and it was very unprofessional. I, that was my experience with it. Um, I know Jocelyn won't let us fly it anymore because we just did not have a good experience with them. Um, uh, other ones. I mean, there's other airlines that are so-so. But, yeah, those are just the ones that like kind of off the top of my head. Yeah, there you go. The closest European version of the, of the N95 is the FFP2. We've used both in Germany and France without issue when masking was strictly enforced last year. Yeah, that's it, FFP2. Thank you, B BSSD Europa. That's that's what, the, what it's called. And they'll say that in there. And honestly, I mean, if we were walking the train stations and just went to the little kiosk, like, they, they don't have it out. You just ask, for, hey, do you got a mask? And they're like, yeah, yeah. And they'll just sell you, they'll sell you like one mask or two masks. I will say when you buy those from there, they, they break quickly. So don't just buy one, buy a few. Um, so then a couple of times I'm like, ah, <laughs> so let's see. I want to visit London and Paris next year. Awesome. I have a four year old and three month old. Any tips for travel with young children? So we actually do. So if you go to on our, just look up traveling with children, Walter's world on YouTube, we have a number of videos that cover that. Uh, and Jocelyn has some on our website. We have it for like tips, like on vlog versions of it. But I think the video one's better uh, some of their older like really old videos with jocelyn and them and she's doing them uh but we have a ton of things i would think in general if you're looking at next year so you have a five-year-old which will be fine and a 13 month old 15 year and a half so the year and a half will be the one that's a little bit more tough because they're going to want to be go 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 um so i would say look at your look at their travel the travel times and the nap times when you can get things going adjust their bedtimes before you go so it's a little bit closer it's just an hour or two that'll be easier for them honestly traveling with little kids is very easy um just people think it's hard and it's more hard on the parents than, than the kids um if 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 you're if you have them on if they like their games they have games they have ipad or something like that or they're watching a blippy or whatever i would download all that stuff you don't want to worry about not having internet like download a bunch of stuff onto your phone or on an ipad so they have that um, what we do with our little kids, their their carry on bag would have the, like their basic toy stuff. We got a lot of things to help with that, so I would just watch the videos before I, you know, just regurgitate everything for you. But yeah, it's very easy to do. It's just going to be the flight with a 13 month old. We're going to be well, 15 month old when you go. I Man, well, I don't know when you're. I'm saying a year from now. So, uh, but it is doable. We travel with our kids all the time. It was so easy. Um, London to Paris, they're pretty cool with kids too, so that's nice. Um, I will say don't expect any kids. You'll, you'll find plenty of kids meals in London In Paris. You won't find too many kids meals. So it might be like sharing with them, uh, for that. Uh, or you can ask like, Hey, can you make a smaller portion? You might pay the full price, but they might make you a smaller portion. Um, but overall it's really good. I would say with a five-year-old and a 13 month old, I, I would go with an umbrella stroller. Um, because if you take your big Graco, well, London and Paris, you can pull it off because the sidewalks are big enough. But sometimes the umbrella stroller is just a lot easier and like throw a baby Bjorn and carry him around with that. Like that's what we did all the time with ours. And they're 16 and 11 now and they're still traveling just fine. Let's see. Uh, 
<laughs> Darian, I'm a Delta Lufthansa guy. Lufthansa guy, however, Singapore Airlines was to Germany was great. I, I've never flown them, so I'm, I'm not as lucky as you, my friend. Drew Klein, best money transfer service to send money abroad. My bank wants fifty dollars to make a bank transfer to Greece. Need to deposit six five euros for the first day car rental. I usually just use a credit card that'll take care of that, and they'll just have it on my credit card. Um, I don't, I don't ever transfer money um, unless I like have like bail somebody out of jail. So I do, not, I do not know. Um, I know a lot of people use um, Western Union. They're all the thing is Western Union is all over the place. So that's one of the times you need to send money to somebody. Like let's say you did get robbed and you needed cash. Go tell your friends to go to Western Union and they can just go online and send you money from Western Union. So you can pick it up at a Western Union branch because they're in all of like the major cities in Europe and a lot of countries around the world, especially people send money back home to repatriate the money or well, to you know send money back to mom or whatever. So that's going to be a, a thing to look at. And yes, you do have to pay the fees for it. Um, yeah, like with a car rental, they should take a credit card. All right. So iris did you ever get in a hot air balloon ride i saw it available in toledo and in lithuania but i don't know would you do it so i have not um i'm actually scared of heights and uh i don't know if i i, I would i guess my wife would make me do it but i'm not the biggest fan of doing that <laughs> they actually have a uh balloon festival about an hour away from us that we go to every other year or so um they have rides and stuff so i've thought about it and i haven't done it yet I know the one you're talking about in Lithuania. Friends might have done it. They had a good time with it. So it's doable. It is definitely doable. So hi, Marianne. So good to see you too. But um, sadly, I think we're going to wrap it up today. So we had like 20 minutes of news stuff to talk about. Um, if you do have ideas, don't put it in the, the chat, the chat, the chat comments. Uh, put it in the comments down below when this finishes. If you have ideas for stories you'd like us to talk about or topics you'd like us to talk about on future things. And, you know, we do this every Wednesday at noon, Chicago time. And, you know, we're on a half hour, 45 minutes, something like that. And talk about some of the latest travel news. And right now we're in the very slowest, slowest season of travel. So, like, no one's really thinking about travel. So if you have questions, we can start answering some of those things, too. But, yeah. So I'll finish off with Catherine's question since she's on. Would you suggest taking long haul trains, an eight hour journey during the day or overnight? Uh, there's not a lot of overnight trains anymore. So you could do the overnight train to get it out of the way because usually an eight hour journey during the day is probably a 12 to 14 hour journey overnight if you're looking at Europe and a lot of them have gotten rid of those. Um, also make sure you have a lock to lock your bag into onto the thing above because you fall asleep. It's not unheard of that people will come and take your stuff. So be ready for it. Oh, I hate when work gets in the way. Dang work. Well, I appreciate watching the replay. So everybody, I wish you all the best. Thank you for joining us today. And we'll be back next Wednesday with uh, more travel news. And this Saturday, uh, what do we have? I can't remember what we have coming out. We have a video coming out this Saturday on Walter's World. Uh, we have, I think, the Eats of Miami, maybe. Yeah, I think it's the Eats of Miami on Sunday. So we have a nice collection of stuff coming up for you. I appreciate everybody. If you want to learn some Italian, go on our main channel. We have Basic Italian for Tourists coming out today. It already came out. Actually, came out, and then there was a mistake, so I had to take it off. So we lost, like, the first, like, 2,000 views. So if you watched it earlier this morning, go watch it again and give us a thumbs up on it because that killed the video. When I had to take it down and fix something and put it back up, it just kills the video. So it's, like, 10 out of 10, and it's, like, a 1,000 views. <laughs> so... Anyway, yes, and don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you very much, Yow077. I appreciate it. All right, everybody, you have yourself a fantastic Wednesday, and I'll see you next week, or I'll see you online at one of our other videos. So uh, have a good one. Bye, everybody.